Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Raven Maureen. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you everything that I made in June, July, and August. And guess what? I took a count and it's like 30 garments. Get some popcorn, get a snack, get a drink because we're gonna go over everything and I'm gonna make sure you don't miss a beat. So first I do wanna say that I am slowly getting over this congestion that I've had. So um, I figured today was a good day to get some videos out or recorded at least. And I also wanna say too that I finally finished my eyelet dress, but more on that later. So let's rewind all the way back to June and let's talk about at the top of June, I had 17 garments left to make for the year. If you've been following me since January, then you know that I set a, a goal for myself to make 52 garments before the end of the year. I had 17 garments left to do by June. And with the 30 things that I made, for June, July, and August, I have exceeded that goal. So, so let's talk about, let's go all the way back to June. So in the beginning of June, I have my notes because I had to go back and take inventory myself. Um, so in the beginning of June, I made the white Mabel dress and this was a hit out of the park because I actually avoided the whole sharing and I did a hack where I just, kind of did like a zigzag stitch over the elastic band. I have a whole video about it. And I also shortened the hem by a lot. And so I made this like a sexy white milkmaid dress that I actually wore in New York while I was fabric shopping in Jamaica, Queens. The next thing I made, this was also for my New York trip. This was Simplicity 9338. This is a men's pants pattern. It's actually one of Norris's patterns. And I made these pants for Joe. And <laughs> unfortunately, the only picture I really have of Joe with these pants on is when he's holding the pizza box. Um, we went to this legendary pizza place in New York called Cuts and Slices. He wore those on that day. And these are like these striped, almost like seersucker, but not really because I actually used an old bed sheet for those. And um, the original pattern had like eight pockets. And I said, okay, like let's do like the side pocket and then like two cargo pockets and then pockets on the back. I think that's like, I ended up with like six pockets versus the eight. But either way, he loves them. He especially loves them because they have a drawstring and he doesn't like to like have to take off his belt when we're traveling, you know, through TSA or whatever. So he really, really enjoys these pants. So 10 out of 10. So I also made some McCall's PJs. I actually never photographed myself in these. All I did was like make a quick reel about them, but I love these PJs. And I'll be very honest with you, I don't know where the top is. I've only seen the shorts recently, so I've got to find that. And fun fact about those, I also used a bed sheet for those as well. It was like a nice like white bed sheet that I got from the Goodwill and whatnot. I cut it up. I made that pajama set in like a day and it was perfect for summer or at least the beginning of summer. The next thing I made also wore in New York. This is Simplicity 9597. This is the black and white Mimi G dress. I actually wore this on Juneteenth. We were supposed to go to a Juneteenth festival, but we were so tired with like all the pizza and waiting in line and whatnot that um, we ended up not going to the festival, but obviously I still wore it and I still wanted to honor my heritage in that way. And so I made, it's like, I cut like six inches off the bottom and then I did like the tie straps. And I get a lot of questions about how I'm able to make this dress fit with my bust size and without it like puckering or anything in the back. The cheat code to this dress is making tie straps because what it does is it allows for that adjustment. So you can adjust for your bust being higher or lower or whatever. Listen to me, the cheat code is the straps. <laughs> Okay, so last thing I wore in New York, this is McCall 7789. Now this is a fabric from Mood Fabrics and it's got a little keyhole in the front. And I actually wore this specifically to Mood Fabrics. I guess it was kind of like an ode to Mood because I love Mood so much. And I did not expect to see the same fabric 
for that dress in the mood store because it said it was an online exclusive and so that was a really fun bit when i did go to the store and i saw the bolt like literally staring back at me but this was a hit as well i got a lot of compliments off of it and um mccall 7789 was actually like a sneaky good pattern that i made more than once this summer so stay tuned for that okay so let's get into july because july was heavy on the garment making so let's see i did one two three four five five outfits in june which is actually okay you guys know how i sew so five garments in june is on the low end for me y'all know that um so going into july i was like speed sewing straight into my honeymoon my honeymoon was literally like the last day of the month into the first week of august and literally i was like a woman on a mission like i just did not hold back and so this is probably i probably set a, my own personal record in making garments but here we go here's the countdown also i have an entire video of everything that i made for the honeymoon i actually you know what i think i have like five different videos about all of these outfits so here's the sixth one <laughs> so i did make mccall's 8403 now that was a so long for mccall's and this is from their new summer pattern it had the two slits on the side the plunging neckline the collar the two zippers in the back a partridge in a pear tree but i love this dress i just know that I, because the way I like to eat when I'm on vacation, I was like, I got to keep this dress at home because the cutouts with the way I like to eat, it's not cute. But I do love this dress. Okay, so the next thing I made was Simplicity 8594. I made this dress for my honeymoon, took it out of the bag on the cruise and never wore it. There are some things that you literally, you can make all of the things and just never actually get to wear them. It's a true story. Um, I have regrets about not wearing this dress, but obviously it's still in my closet and I have a lot of time to wear this dress. So I cannot wait for a nice little hot date where I can throw this on. And I, this, this particular dress was like sneaky. It was like a sneaky pattern because I was like not really expecting to fall in love with this pattern. And I was like, I was like, who's that girl? That's me. That can't be me. All right, so the next thing I made was the Ribnet 9757. This is a Ribnet two-piece. I made this in like a couple of hours. Super, super simple. If you're new to sewing but want to like get into Ribnets or just knits, period, this is a, probably a really good pattern for you. This was literally like a top and then like a skirt with a slit and like an, an elastic waistband. Like no closures, no nothing. Like very, very basic. But I loved that I chose that mint knit fabric because a lot of the other ones I saw, there was a lot of variations where people used a lot of colors, a lot of prints and whatnot. And I just didn't see that for myself. And I wanted something that was more minimalist and it paid off. Um, I still, that was one that I also did not pack for my honeymoon, but I would still love to wear this in the future. McCall's 7789 my love. Okay, so this is the white and tan polka dot dress. Um, I wore this on Elegant Night, the first Elegant Night of our cruise. Um, I love this dress. Like, this dress can do no wrong in my eyes. And it took up almost every bit of that white and tan polka dot from Joann's. I actually think that fabric is sold out now. Um, I bought the fabric last year, never did anything with it. And then this year, I had like a eureka moment and I was like, I know what to do now. Um, the first time I made this dress, now granted, I only made one one of these dresses, but the first time I made it, it was strapless. And then after some coming to Jesus meetings with myself, I realized I needed to add straps. So I had to play around with the strap placement for like a good hour or two one night and eventually we got it down i had to like undo the lining it was a whole thing but it paid off it was gorgeous this dress will literally go down in history in my personal in my personal events of life <laughs> i guess you could say 
ah i made the yellow mabel dress and this one i did with like bias binding tie straps and honestly this was an experiment like i didn't expect it to really go anywhere and tilly and the buttons they loved the idea which i'm super grateful for and you know they shared it over and over and i was grateful for that as well um and i don't know like i was like okay with it and then i kept wearing it and I was like, you know what, this is actually a really cool dress. So I've worn it a couple of times. I've actually gotten some epoxy resin on it, which I'm not very happy about. So if you have any tips on how to get epoxy resin out of fabric, let me know because I love that dress. All right, you guys, we are still in July and let's talk about the neon bathing suit. So I had made the top of the neon bathing suit last year and I had been wearing it with another bathing suit bottom. Well, the gag is, is that I had the Savannah bottoms in the neon cutout since pretty much April when I went to my friend's bachelorette party, never made them. And I was like, you know what? Let me give these a try. I gave them a try and immediately regretted not making more Savannah bottoms. When I tell you that these bottoms snatched, like pulled in, snatched, honey, like it was good. It was great. Um... So the next beach vacation I'm, I take, I want to make another pair or two of the Savannah Bottoms, 10 out of 10. The Georgia Leopard Top. Again, another situation where last year I made the biker shorts. I actually made a whole tutorial for the biker shorts on this channel. And I had the Leopard Georgia Top cut out, got bored with it, said, eh, I'll figure it out later. Brought it back out for the honeymoon and I said, you know what? I think I want to make like a play suit, like a leopard play suit or a two piece for Jamaica. And I did it. I bought like a little like fanny pack, put on my visor with the top out. And that was it. Like, I love that look. That's another look where I feel like that's going to go down on like honeymoon history for me because it was such a fun day. And um, obviously leopard is synonymous with me. <laughs> if you know my life and um it was just all around like a really really fun time so I don't see myself throwing that in like the goodwill pile anytime soon not at all actually and I, I love it so I'm glad I, I was able to make it for for that trip okay so McCall's 8413 so if you watched my vlog on making the honeymoon outfits and you saw me kind of struggling with the length of this and I mean, I'm still not 100% happy with the length, but I can't even lie. Like, it's actually a really nice cover up. It's very, like, chill, still leopard, because you know I'm a leopard girl. But I, I like that. And I would totally do it again, but I would absolutely shorten that length by a lot. Okay, so Simplicity 9597. And I actually made the pants version. Um, for my honeymoon and I used like this fabric I bought from Dress So last September in Vancouver and um, I'm so glad I, I, I saved this fabric for that pattern. It was like a perfect mashup in my opinion and um, I just love this pattern. Now granted, again I did the tie straps but this is where things got interesting because I used a linen and it was pants. The weight of it kept kind of bringing the the bodice down a little bit and so I'm actually really glad I had the tie straps because it allowed me to tie them tighter and just kind of make it work a little bit better but all in all it was a great jumpsuit um maybe not the best for like bathroom breaks <laughs> but I mean it was good I love I love that jumpsuit I mean I need another moment to wear that because that's that's another one that I really, really love. So I remade the Kira top in red. I had a red version, didn't love it. It looked super like, it just wasn't my best work. Like, let's just say that. I remade it because I actually loved the fit of it. And um, this one is obviously much better. I just, I think... Um, I underestimate how nicely red looks on me. So this is something, again, I'm not giving it away. It's not going anywhere. I really wanna make more red bathing suits. This this just kind of signifies that for me. Oh, Simplicity 9778. If y'all haven't made this dress yet, 
you're missing out. Like this dress is chef's kiss. I made it in black. Um, and this was one of those where like less is more like it didn't in my opinion it really did not need to be any other color for me and I really like that it was black and I made the longer version and because I'm so short the longer version ended up being a maxi on me but I didn't hate it like I loved it and it was perfect for we had just gotten our massages and we went to Gigi's Asian restaurant I wore that, I think I wore it for maybe like an hour and then we came back to the room and passed out and we were in for the night. But I was extremely comfortable in this dress, hands down, one of my favorites. And I really, really, really wanna work on making like six more. The Hoochie Daddy set, y'all. So this is Simplicity 9758. This is Norris's pattern. And I had already made up in my mind before even talking to Joe that I wanna make this, I want to make this outfit for you and he's like okay and I'm like no no no, I'm gonna make it like you're gonna have a hoochie daddy set and he's like all right so um I asked him to pick out a fabric and that took a couple of hours one evening we went on moves website we went on uh dresso's website and I was like you gotta pick something like that's tropical or just something that like screams summer and he's like okay so he actually picked this fabric out and I was like, really? Like, I, I that's not something I would pick, but I like when I saw it and when I started working with it, I was like, that's actually pretty good. Like I was like, he's got a good eye for this. So he picked out the fabric. He didn't help me sew these this time, but um, I actually made this the night before we needed to leave. Um, I, I had cut it out like the week prior and then I was like looking at it and I was like, if I don't make this, I'll feel like such a failure because I would have made my entire wardrobe and Joe would have nothing new to commemorate this event. So I literally sewed it up and there were some, there were some discrepancies with the instructions and Norris's sew along. So like, I couldn't really like do a sewing vlog on it because I was like trying to follow Norris's, um, instructions or his his so long for it but it came together very nicely very quickly and he loves it he you know keeps it in his closet and just like everything else I've made him he he wears it quite frequently new look 6736 so <laughs> the joke about this pattern is I don't know what I made you guys like I don't know if it's a halter top a cover-up a half a half and half dress I don't know but I love it and I decided I wanted to make it a top and I did the long version I paired it with these shorts that you really can't see unless like the wind is blowing and I'll get into the shorts next but I made this and it took me by surprise and I used this fabric that I got from Toronto it ate up all four yards of the fabric and then there was like this call for me to do a sew along so I did the sew along for you guys that's you know been live for a couple of weeks and I actually used like this watercolor like tie-dye almost fabric for that one my mom she called me as soon as she saw me put it in my Instagram stories because my mom follows me on Instagram and she was like I want this so it's still hanging on my mannequin I have to send it to my mom or maybe I'll just wait till she comes for Christmas whichever's first <laughs> and um I would say that that is something I would take on vacation over and over and over again um it was just that good and that was one of those outfits when I wore it that's how you know you look good when you wear something and people just look and then they just kind of like nod or they just you know little little slight hate little slight but that I felt I felt pretty good in that one. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. It was it was nice. So the shorts I wore with that, that was actually a vintage pattern. Um, let me sh show y'all those shorts because I don't think anyone has really seen them, but it's a cute pattern. So let's get into it. <clears throat> so these are the shorts. And this is a uh, vintage pattern 8932. It has four buttons on the side. Um, this actually doesn't come with pockets, but I didn't hate that because I just felt like I needed something that was going to go 
underneath the halter. Um, and so I actually wore these shorts the first day of the cruise with our matching shirts. And then I wore it again on the last day with the halter dress. They were just perfect, to be honest with you. And I made no adjustments to this pattern. Like it was a good vintage pattern. It came together fairly quickly. Vintage patterns can kind of make me a little nervous sometimes because if it's like the old language or like old sewing jargon, you really have to like break that down. But this wasn't bad. This was pretty good. And this is part of a, a pattern set that has like the bathing suit, the sarong, these shorts, and then like two versions of a cover up. I swear there's like 10 patterns in one envelope. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but it feels like it. But yeah, if you have an opportunity, make these because they're great. That's all. So the other thing I made was a Saturday skirt set. And this was in like this really cute, like fruity print. And I'll be very honest with you. Like it was a concept that I loved in my head. And then when I wore it, it was like, I don't feel the best. And I don't know if that was like my insecurity like with the fabric that I chose, but I still love it in pictures, but like in real life, I felt like I was standing out probably in the wrong way for me personally, but um, I do love this pattern. I probably would do it in a another, like I can see myself doing it in like an all white or maybe even like an all black, I think would be really, really pretty. But either way, this was probably my least favorite make of my honeymoon and yet I thought it photographed very well but I just didn't feel my best in it okay so I did this was the all white and to, in my mind this is like synonymous and iconic now with our honeymoon the white bikini set this was the Heidi swim top with the Amelia bottoms both by Edgewater and I specifically didn't choose like a white white bathing suit fabric because I didn't want it to be so blinding. I wanted it to be more subtle, like, oh, it's ivory, right? And so I chose the ivory and um, I made the Heidi, the Heidi set and I wasn't sure how this, the, the top would look on me with the square because square can go either way for me. I can look really, really busty on square or square can balance me out. It just really depends. And this worked really good. Um, again, another just piece that I, I, I'm extremely very, very happy with and can't wait to wear again. So this was the Frankie one piece. And I have to be honest with you, I, this was probably my least favorite bathing suit. Um, one, I felt like the ties weren't long enough. Now, granted, I made the t this bathing suit after I made the Amelia Bottoms. So I was thinking in my mind, the tie length has to be the same because it's essentially the same top or the same bathing suit. Just one is a two piece, one is a one piece. And the ties were not long enough for me. And I was like, I like was kind of immediately regretting putting the ties on there. And then I thought about, well, what if I take the ties out? And then I didn't really like how the ties, how the bathing suit looked without the ties. So, um, I wore it when we went to the hot tub and we spent some time at the pool, but I don't think, I don't see myself wearing this again. Um, I, I don't know. I'm on the fence with it. Wasn't my best. I'll say that. So that was the honeymoon. And again, there's like five or six different videos out about everything I just listed for July. Um, now let's talk about August. So August has been just... A complete transition for me from I mean like literally a new job new business okay so the first thing that I made in August was McCall's 8162 these were my white overalls and I have an entire pattern review about these white overalls and there were things that I did not like about the pattern and then there were things that I loved about this pattern but I want to do this again sometime down the line but Either way, I love those overalls. Then I also did McCall's 7936. This was something I was not expecting to love as much, but I love it. And this is the palm leaf jumpsuit. 
I actually regret not making this for my honeymoon because that would have been actually really nice. But there's always next summer, there's always a vacation to be had. So no loss right there. Then I also made the free bucket hat. Now this was something that I had been wanting to do all summer. And obviously things kept getting in the in the way and I kept putting that pushing that project back back and back and um I ended up just making like a tutorial to go with it and it worked out and I love it because I made it to not just fit my head but also my hair and so it is a bucket hat that I can wear while my hair is in this state which is awesome okay and then I made um McCall's 8165 and this was my knit tie-dye jumper. Um, I also talk about this in another video as well and so you can hear my thoughts about that. And then y'all, so if you've been following my last few videos, then you'll know that I finished my black eyelet dress. I'm wearing it today and this is McCall's 7948 and um I made this when I like wasn't feeling my best and so I was just like let me just do it get it over with yada 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 and it actually came out really nice I did not put a lining so you are seeing flesh here and I'm also wearing like flesh color underwear so I just didn't want to put a lining with it because I felt like at that point it would just be a really hot dress so I have binding here binding on the neck and binding in the back as well um, with like a little button to keep it all closed up but this was a great dress to run errands in today I went and got Starbucks and ran to the post office and went to Joann's and this carried me all the way through and I love it now and I love that it's black eyelet I feel like that's perfect for August going into September I mean you can't really go wrong with that so that's what I'm wearing today so there's two outfits I actually forgot um, there is the Barbie dress that I made and I actually have never taken a photograph of it. Shame on me. And I don't even know if like, at this point, should I even do a photograph of it? I mean, I don't know. Um, but I love this dress and I did a whole Barbie vlog on it. And, um, I used this fabric that I got from Toronto, this, um, stripe orange and hot pink fabric i made it into like this jiffy halter dress just absolutely stunning and then the other one is mimi g's other pattern with the square neck and i used this um power mesh fabric and there was a nude power mesh underneath it and that was from la finch fabrics um and it's kind of like this groovy wavy pattern and i just loved how it looked and i was like i need that for that dress specifically and that was one of those dresses I made for Toronto never wore it in Toronto um but I would absolutely wear that on a hot date with my husband like so cute okay you guys so that makes up the 30 outfits that I made in the last three months I can't even believe I'm saying that out loud and you guys Thank you so much for following along and following along in my sewing journey. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And you can follow me here on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and threads at Raven Maureen. I will see you all next time. Bye.